जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई होप एवरीबॉडी इज फाइन एंड हैड अ ग्रेट वीकेंड आई अपोलोजाइज फॉर नॉट कमिंग ऑन द वीकेंड बट आई वाज सो टाइड अप फैमिली ऑफ कोर्स कम्स फर्स्ट एंड सो देयरफॉर आई डिड नॉट स्केड्यूल एनी वीडियो आई टिपिकली डू फ्यू आवर्स इन एडवांस टू टेल यू दैट दैट्स एक्सपेक्टेड टाइम आई विल कम आई वाज सपोज्ड टू कम एट 9 आवर रेगुलर टाइम that's what our uh, you know daily class time is but i was invited by urdu point to talk about this tax issue uh, freelancers uh, and it industry exports issue so therefore uh, thought it would be wise to uh, schedule a time where i can easily make it 9:45 was the best uh, available time thank you prajwal and thank you everybody walikum salam everybody Uh, so monday and tuesday i initially thought we would be covering digital marketing but i want to cover digital marketing when i'm mentally free because digital marketing requires a lot of creativity it requires a lot of uh, uh proactiveness and far sightness and if you lack any of these the chances of you stepping up to the game nicely uh it's little difficult before we begin our class i would request everybody to like the video and uh this would help facebook recommending this video to more people who are on platform right now um we spend a lot of time watching uh, music and irrelevant videos uh, but it won't hurt a bit uh, to get up premium information worth hundreds and thousands of dollars absolutely free blogging blogging falls in the criteria of passive income uh, active income requires you to sit on your desk 24/7 it also means that uh, you are in constant pursuit of finding clients that could pay you for your freelancing gig for your uh, you know uh, work you do whereas in the case of blogging could be written blogging or could be instagram blogging you are not required to sit on your desk all the time right it means that if you create a decent blog post more on that uh, later in this lecture and if you learn how to grab the interest of your audience you are giving yourself an outside chance of not only engaging them to view your content read it till end but also perhaps convincing them persuading them enough to share your content uh, on their social media among their social circles uh, with a call to action such as hey this is one good read you may want to read it hey this is one good read really loved reading it till end a natural call to action brings in a lot of value to your blog and that's how you grow organically when i use the word organically i precisely refer to the importance of reaching out to your targeted audience who are looking for your product and service who are looking to hear from you without paying a single penny and linear of course is other way around but for now we are going to discuss the organic approach most of you are beginners they do not have enough money whereas you have you're passionate about writing you're passionate about blogging and you want to write for your for your uh, niche and you want to grab the interest of your audience so not only they keep coming back at your blog and read your content but they also refer more people by sharing your content onto this social media 
organic outreach before we begin i need to throw in a disclaimer here organic outreach is very difficult especially in the world of internet where if you do not learn digital marketing if you do not even know how to engage your audience then the chances of people becoming your brand loyal a little difficult but if you do the baby steps right if you follow what i'm about to teach you at least you have a chance of not only creating a strong presence on the internet but at the same time you will get lots of loyal brand uh, brand loyal users who will keep coming back to your blog how does this happen it could happen in one day if you are as like lucky as dhananir ye main hu ye mere dost hain aur party ho rahi hai or if you are someone like hisham server who is a blog that has been out there for like four odd years and all of a sudden i got into a limelight six months back because of few posts that touched the nerves check the pulse of the economy gave a reality check to our government as well as to the younger people who wanted to make money on the internet four good years first two years were actually struggling period where i had to literally go through motions and not experience anything good in return i did not make money i did not have good viewership i was dependent on uh, someone else's content that i could put on my facebook page as well as on my blog and uh, lots of struggles but then i realized that in i want to be different then i've got to do something different i just do not need to follow the crowd and as a blogger the first thumb rule and i want you to write this down the first thumb rule as far as i am concerned folks is if you want to achieve something different you'll have to do something different by doing something different i i predominantly refer to the importance of going unorthodox doing unimaginable and putting your thumb on a pulse that not only drives a narrative in a short as well as in a long run but it also turns out to be an authority in that particular niche so for example when you talk about telcos in pakistan pro pakistani is a very prominent voice when you talk about technology techjuice.pk is a prominent voice you talk about society economy express tribune is a prominent voice don urdu point express these blogs are not only standing at a very prominent position but they also weigh in heavily with their valuable input whenever they chip in as a blogger the mistake i made was i was just following the crowd okay that's fine so wired.com has a technology news let's cover it okay that's fine techcrunch.com has a technology news about south asia let's cover it something happening happening in singapore let's cover it something happening in in brazil let's cover it money internet only to find out that whatever i was doing since i was just uh, you know copying pasting someone else's content uh, people were least bothered so that's first thing i realized as a blogger when i 
uh, stepped up to this blogging game. And the second thing I realized was, unless and until you talk about the problems that are local, you talk about the problems that uh, identify the agony people are going through, unless and until you talk about the issues that are common man's issue in your society, in your community, because that's where you will eventually end up attracting audience, uh, regardless of the number of audience, but at least to begin with, as a, as a, as a new blogger, since you write about something and then you share it on your social media, uh, getting your blog index on Google is a long process, right? So the first and the quickest approach is to share it on your social media and have people uh, come to your blog. But if they come to your blog and see something talking about uh, that is irrelevant to them, to them something that is uh, not linked to them, they will not give it a read. So what happens is I was lucky enough to sail all these sail through all these years just because I had this social media presence. Perhaps the only thing I, um, you know, the only thing that goes in my credit is my story as a freelancer, a freelancer that has made over 1 million US dollars in sales, um, was showcased in the Hall of Fame on Guru.com, was uh, ranked as top seed on one of the world's largest freelance marketplace called Guru.com. So therefore, whatever I was doing somehow was brought to the forefront because of the narrative uh, or a pre-notion I had built as a freelancer or as a, as a promising freelancer who has uh, achieved something. Now, the real problem was, and that's where I got the reality check. At the end of the day, if I talk something irrelevant, people don't listen to it. If I talk something uh, uh, that does not resonate well with the uh, with the thinking process or the real issues of the people, why would they even worry about uh, reading the news of, of of Singapore or China or, or let's say Malaysia for that matter? No offense uh, intended, but uh, talking about the local problems. So therefore, they have to be discussed uh, by someone uh, who is local and has got a good pulse on at the helm of affairs. And then once I realized that I have to be different if I want to receive different results, I started talking about freelancing. I started talking about money. I started talking about economy. I started talking about the problems of internet. And all of a sudden, the single reality check, one-liner single reality check helped me raise beingguru.com viewership to the next level. And that single liner was, are you struggling to make money online? If yes, come with me. I'll show you the way. And I still, still uh, rely heavily on that single liner because I believe you are as big as you challenge yourself. I believe that uh, uh, when you, when you, when you converse with your, with the people around you, uh, at, you know, at least, at least you are giving yourself a fair chance of having a conversation because you're discussing common issues. You're discussing common problems. You're discussing the problems everybody is going through in day to day life. But if you talk about, you know, irrelevant topics and irrelevant issues, you can go at, at length and write hundreds and thousands of words, but unless and until you get ranked on google.com and then uh, the content consumers, who are actually looking for that particular content on guru.com, on yahoo.com, unless they search for your content, you're ranked well in top 10, and then they come onto your website, and then they, you know, uh, read or skim through that article, uh, and then they, you know, uh, subscribe to your channel and you build your audience base. Unless that happens, your content is good for nothing. So my advice to all the bloggers out there who are attending these classes, Focus on your one micro niche. What does this mean? 
Pakistan has got uh, plenty of problems, and I say these plenty of problems are actually plenty of plenty of future opportunities. These opportunities will not only help you in making money if you solve the problems, but they will also open more gateways to more opportunities. That's how I uh, I cemented my place here as a social media influencer. Somebody asked me the other day. What do you do? And uh, it took me a little while to actually come up with the right answer. And I still do not know the right answer because I've been doing uh, an awful lot, an awful lot in my capacity. Hisham Silver is a freelancer. Everybody knows it. Uh, if you have attended my cohort uh, last week, uh, you have seen all the results of my freelancing journey. Hisham Silver is a blogger. He owns Binguru.com. Hisham Silver is a social media influencer. This guy's all over the place on Facebook, not only on his Facebook profile, but also on his Facebook pages. Uh, and I've got a few handful pages, uh, uh, cumulative value crossing over 1 million uh, followers here. And then he's got this, uh, you know, uh, prominent freelancing group where he spends a lot of his time. Hey, that's, that's, that's not just it. This is not it. He's also a YouTuber. As a matter of fact, he's got two YouTube uh, channels. He's got a Urdu YouTube channel that has just hit 250K. So, uh, you know, feel free to throw your hearts uh, in the comment section. And here he is about to touch 20K for his English channel. Also, he's got a couple of handy digital products. Sells one-to-one -one mentoring to the West. Uh, sells ebooks on Amazon. My point here is, if I tell you, hey, do you want to learn all this? Come with me if you want to learn how to make multiple sources of income on the internet. By giving you a proof of what I've done in past or still doing, by showing you the actual results, I am convincing you to become my product. And you are my product. If you do not pay, you are a product. Because a new channel, English in language, absolutely, uh, you know, uh, uh, some for some it's a it's it's a it's an alien alien language because they do not realize uh, the importance of learning English coming from a uh, government schools and then you know um, as brought up in, a, in, a, in an environment where uh, English is supposed to be uh, literally pun intended alien language and then they consuming all the content every single night speaks volume about the content they are consuming right if they're being educated if they're being uh, you know given the knowledge and if they're being informed not only by gaining that particular knowledge they'll be able to exercise it practically and make money on the internet but in the long run who knows they might just form their own companies they might just uh, uh, empower more people to work for them and that's how the whole process begins from a single baby step and i tell you blogging could be one important baby step if you do it rightly if you do it correctly if you do it the way it is supposed to be done not making the same mistakes I've done for the last four years. And then, uh, you know, I made amends and I, uh, you know, took a pause and reassessed my reason of failures. And then I, then I, you know, uh, identified that if I want to be different, I have to do something different. By identifying your blogging niche, Focusing on the micro or the, or the very, you know, single approach, absolutely micro approach. By not sounding controversial in your content. At the end of the day, who knows you end up grabbing an interest of the audience who are looking for your content. Everybody's got an audience, I tell you. Joe Biden had an audience. Donald Trump had an audience. 
Nawaz Sharif has an audience. Imran Khan has an audience. Everyone in this universe has an audience. Vakar Zaka has an audience. Hisham Sarwar has an audience. Uh, Junaid Akram has an audience. Then we Nadla has an audience. So it all gets down to you being positive enough to show up if you want to grab that audience. So Micronesia is, uh, let me put you in a timeout first before I uh, talk about Micronesia. So for example, you talk about uh, cooking, right? And then your specialty is uh, barbecue steaks. You should talk about barbecue steaks, how to create uh, finger licking good barbecue steaks. And then, you know, you focus on the ingredients, you focus on the different recipes, you focus on the presentation, uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the list goes on and on. Whereas cooking is a macro. I mean, it covers everything. I mean, you could cook a, a, a steak or you could uh, uh, cook a, a meal and, and the list goes you know, on. So micro niche means specifically focusing on one domain, one uh, area of expertise, right? I don't use any any hosting here. Being Guru 2.0 is on YouTube. I'm not sure you're asking here. Okay. So once you identify your niche, the next step is identify the keywords you can easily rank for when you write an article. Now that is the most important part. You need to pay. Uh, forget about uh, you know paying uh, the, the money here. Uh, just the attention for now would suffice. So you need to pay, <laughs> pun intended again, you need to pay very close attention to keyword selection because as a blogger who uh, who wants to grab interest of their targeted audience, you could only get an audience if you show up and you are found on search engines, right? <laughs> Thank you, Fatma. Fatma seems to be the only one... Uh, who got the joke here. How do you identify the keywords? There are many websites that let you identify the keywords. I'm using, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, Amazon AWS, okay. The CR gaming is a little kid, I believe. I can show you this guy's under 18. Hey, how old are you? Keyboard, keyboard warriors, Hashem, we call it keyboard warriors, bro. <laughs> okay, back to the, back to the topic. So how do you identify your niche? How do you identify the keywords you want to rank for? How do you even know what keywords are competitive and what keywords are less competitive? I'm sure there must be. Uh, there must be a way to identify the keyword competition. And that's the subject for this discussion. If somehow you learn and pay close attention to what I'm about to teach you, if you learn how to identify less competitive keywords, you are about to game your blogging game. Now I'm going to share my screen here. I'm going to take you to a little journey here. To begin with, first things first. Okay, I'm going to share my full screen. Why not share the full screen here? There you go. First things first, putting it on a full screen. That's my blog. It is called beingguru.com. If you have looked at the assignments, I have asked you in the past to read my different blog posts relating, related to freelancing, related to Fiverr, and then rewrite those articles in your own words. We write about different topics daily. Some do good, some sort of struggle. For example, this one was written by me on Saturday. And look at this amazing result this particular blog post has received. 26 
0.3k views. Now, to put things in counter perspective, if somebody is watching your content and reading through your different blog posts, higher number of viewership means if you have got your blog posts monetized, you are actually making money. So when a viewer reads your blog content, you, you make a money based on impressions per 1000 impressions or perhaps if the ad is good enough to be clickable, people click on the ad and the website owner makes money. So I created this blog post and it's still going viral. Uh, this new system I really hate of this uh, ad sense of showing, you know, ad in the middle. No, why, why does this happen? But anyways, there you go. It talks about having multiple sources of income so that in case your primary source of income goes down, you have secondary source of income supplementing you and helping you make ends meet. It is very important. You can, uh, you can read it later, but the point I want to emphasize is these, this is an ad, AppSumo. In the blog post, I talk about blogging, I talk about YouTube, I talk about freelancing. So therefore, the relevant ads show up in this blog post. So when I talk about cars, there's a good chance Google AdSense will show me the ads related to cars. If I talk about insurance in my blog post, there's a good chance I will see insurance related advertisement on my blog post. So since I'm talking about internet money, so therefore uh, I'm, 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 I'm receiving, uh, you know, the, I'm getting the ads of multiple sources of income and the internet. If you want to make money as a blogger, you have to, sooner or later you'll have to go for it. So why not now? Think about creating your website. The one you see on your screen is my blog. In all 2019, I did not do anything. I did not do freelancing and I just depend my whole 365 days. Uh, that's what I was doing all throughout the year. Blogging is a passive source of income. So you write a blog post, you go and for a walk or a drive, spend time with your family. You do not have to sit on your desk 24 seven. And again, at, at the end of the day, just like an automated business uh, fetches you a good result. If you've got good viewership, your blog gives you good result. It gives you good money. And the result in the case of Blogger is A, to have good viewership and B, to make money. Google AdSense is a, one effective way of making money from your blog. You'll have to apply for Google AdSense. I'm going to discuss this tomorrow. The topic of my discussion today is keyword analysis, because if you understand the importance of analyzing your keyword, the job just gets easier. So before I begin, I'm going to come back on my screen and I think we are good to here. Good to go here. Now I want you to stop commenting because I'm not on my screen. You clearly see I am not on my screen. If you want to rank for, uh, I, I assume that you have identified niche of your blog. Once you have identified niche of your blog, the second step is to have a website. You can go to fiverr.com. You could go to workchest.com. That's a website I own and uh, go and post a project requesting about, uh, requesting that you need a blogger who could create a blog website for you. For you. 
this is workchurch.com then there is fiverr.com there is upwork.com competition on upwork and guru.com would be relatively higher as compared to uh, fiverr on workchurch uh, you you post project for free and uh, you know you get in a conversation with a freelancer you want to hire or you could hire anybody around you maybe uh, if you both live in the same city that's fine uh, uh, the the idea is to have a wordpress website the reason why i say wordpress website is because my website is created in wordpress i have hosted it on a cloud platform it's a amazon cloud and uh, since i get a lot of viewership i get around 5 to 10000 views every single day uh, so therefore uh, i mean i cannot afford to host this website on a shared host or or a host that has got less bandwidth or less storage or less ra less ram so that all i would need at the end of the day is people coming on my website and then they are unable to load my website and leaving my website that would be the last thing i would ever need so assumingly you have identified your niche that's the first step the second step is you have created your blog website now you need to write for your blog on my blog post and that's a mistake i made i have literally literally tried to cover every single niche uh, even those niches that were that were irrelevant and should not have grabbed my attention but i was so stupid in my early days to uh, you know write and waste my energies and only to find out that lots of my blog posts do not even rank on google if you want to be you know found on google the first thing you need to learn is to identify your competitor you need to learn what people are searching for as a blogger this should be your first priority learn how to identify your competitor and at the same time learn what people are searching for how do i identify my competitor to begin with the first thing is i have to search for something so assumingly i am into freelancing right that's what i teach for freelancing when i type in this keyword on google and everybody uses google just like everybody loves raymond <laughs> So when you search for the keyword freelancing if i scroll all the way to the bottom there you see these are the related searches people are searching for i can also identify or know what people are searching for by clicking on uh, the search text box and hitting space bar after my keyword so there you go i just pressed space bar and this shows me all the keywords people are searching for on google so again there are two ways to identify what people are searching for a when you search for something scroll all the way to the bottom and see related searches and b uh, go back to the uh, search bar and hit space button at the end of the keyword and this will show you all the keywords people are searching for so now we have established the importance of knowing and learning what people are searching for we need to identify the competition for these particular keywords all of these are our keywords since i am into freelancing assumingly i want to open a blog that pivots around freelancing keyword i want to cover freelancing uh, as as a micro niche not as a macro so perhaps maybe i want to cover freelancing in pakistan maybe i want to cover freelancing in india freelancing in south asia why everybody should do freelancing maybe i should only cover on uh, uh, maybe primary freelancing which is you know 
mainstream freelancing, uh, Upwork, Guru.com. Maybe I should cover on uh, Fiverr alone. So again, once you drill down to the micro niche, the chances of you and your blog becoming successful are far higher than you being all, you know, showing up all over the place. It just does not work. So once I've identified these keywords, what is the next step? The next step is to find out what is the competition for these particular keywords. So I type in freelancing and when I put the space bar, the first drop down I see is freelancing definition. I click on freelancing definition just to get a fair bit of idea about the competition. To no surprise folks, since uh, I'm Jay Khan Shikre of freelancing, um, bguru.com is ranked in the top second spot for this particular keyword search. And I typically get around uh, uh, 50 to 100 uh, keyword searches every single month for this keyword. So whenever people search for freelancing definition, uh, they see beingguru.com in top 10 results. What you see here on the top is last 28 days, only 15 clicks. So people do not search for this particular keyword, right? And if I search freelance definition, uh, since I am on the second page, people do not even go there. Now read between the lines. I want you to pay very close attention to this important factor. Secondary keyword, the first one was freelancing definition. Second is only freelance definition. And Google has ranked me, but in the second page of search results. The point I want to emphasize is nobody would ever, ever go to the second page and search for your website. People usually search for a keyword. They quickly skim through the top 10 results and this is it. Nobody will click the next button and find my website. So the goal here is, and you got to shoot for your goals here. Instead of spending time and writing for hours after hours without knowing your keywords and without identifying and analyzing your competitor, you are going to waste the first three years just like I wasted my first three years. Don't even go there. This is why I'm so pushy about emphasizing on 80-20 Pareto principle. 80% of your time should be spent before starting something so that in the long run, only with 20% of efforts, you get 80% of results in return. Do the basics right. Go back to the drawing board. Make sure you know every single detail about your keyword, about your competitor you ever wanted to know, right? So how do you identify your competitor and how do you identify your keywords? One effective way is a website called Uber Suggest. So I copy uh, freelance definition and I skim through before I go to Uber Suggest, I'll kick, quickly browse through uh, the websites here. So dictionary.com, okay, that's fine. Uh, beingguru.com, that's my website, uh, debitor.com, not sure who is this company, then there's Flex Jobs, and there is Mariam Webmaster, then there is Collins Dictionary, then there's your dictionary, so it seems like this is not a competitive keyword, at least in Pakistan, um, but in West, it might just have a significant importance. So I go to ubersuggest.com, the link is neilpatel.com uber suggest let me know if you guys can see the link if you don't i will paste the link in the comment section 
Let me know if you can see the URL. Quickly, guys, quick, 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 quick. The commenting has stopped, at least for me. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Okay. Right. That's fine. So I go to neilpatel.com, Uber suggest, and I type in the keyword I've just copied. It, it is freelancing definition. As a free account user, you can only perform three searches on Neil Patel Uber suggest. So if you want to uh, use it after three free searches, you will have to upgrade your account and it's pretty basic. So when I search for freelance definition, the reason why I like this tool is because it gives me every single information, not for the keyword, but also for my compet competition. Now here I see that in US, 6,600 people are searching for this keyword. I see that it's SEO difficulty, search engine optimization difficulty is only 20. More on that later. Don't, don't pay attention to this. I see that it's paid difficulty. Even if I pay to Google using Google ads, that is only one, which means that if this keyword is not costly. How do I identify my competitor? What are the other keyword ideas I can take from freelancing definition? Uber suggest tells me everything. So it, it tells me that the keyword ideas I can gather from this basic keyword is what is freelancers? People are searching for it. 8100 is the search volume. That's fine. Definition of freelance, 6,600 people are searching for it. And it shows me all the keywords that are uh, related to the freelancing keyword and also shows me the volume and the difficulty. Now for the difficulty sake is something you need to understand as a blocker. When you perform your search on Uber suggest, if anything falls in the green area on a right hand column, that is ST. ST means keyword difficulty, right? SEO difficulty, search difficulty. Anything that falls in this green area is worth paying attention to because green area means you can easily rank for this keyword. Now, this does not mean that all of you who are watching me right now, let's see how many of you are watching this video. It, this does not mean that all 125 of you start uh, creating a freelancing blog and then you uh, rip me off by throwing me out of the competition. At the end of the day, I'm still a cat who knows uh, how to climb a tree, if you know what I mean. So don't even think about this. But when you talk about, where is that tab? When you talk about keyword ideas, keyword analysis, keyword uh, Compare competition, Uber suggests should be your one stop source. So here I search for freelance definition and then it is giving me the keyword ideas, all keyword ideas related to freelance definition. And if I scroll to the bottom, it is also showing me content ideas. Hey, look, these are the websites who are ranking good for the keyword freelance definition, the gigforce.com, medium.com, shipshippay.com, davewoods.co.uk. Not only it shows me content ideas, but it is also showing me social media shares. Since this does not seem to be a prominent keyword people search for, I mean 6,000 all over the world, that's fine. No, you know, that's not a big keyword. So therefore it is not even difficult to rank. 
but who would mind uh, any bit of traffic uh, on your blog uh, for for even non competitive keywords that's how you scale up your blog and that's what i did all 2019 and 20 that's how i scaled up my blog once i identified that i have to be different and this is how you become different you become different by knowing your keywords you know you know uh, it is very hard to rank for the keywords that are very competitive you uh, become different when you know your competitors uh, i'll come to the competitors part in a second so if you uh, see these uh, social media sharing uh, numbers, these they are pretty decent, absolutely decent. Now on the left hand side, the keyword analyzer also gives me keyword ideas. If I click on the keyword ideas, loading as we speak, there I see all the keywords Uber suggests is telling me people are searching for these keywords on Google. What does it mean to freelance? Okay, fine enough. What is freelance reporter? And the list goes on and on. Many of them are actually, uh, you know, uh, decent volume keywords. For example, what is freelancers? 8,100 goofs, or uh, did I say goofs? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I wanted to say people. What is freelancers? 8,100 people are searching Google for, uh, you know, to know what is freelancers? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So since the uh, world is full of goose, <laughs> let's see what who is my competitor. On the left hand side, I see competitive analysis. On a competitive analysis, I click on traffic overview. Now for the same keyword, if I type in a domain name, once I have identified my competitor, let's go back to where's Google. There you go, Google. Uh, Google Trends. No, I'm not looking precisely on, uh, about Google Trends, but I wanted to identify one of my competitors. Uh, for example, this guy, debitor.com. I click on this link, takes me to debitor.com, and it seems like a it seems like a directory here. Hey, this is related items. Can someone just remind me? 20 minutes later uh, to talk about the importance of related items. So another mistake I've made on my blog. You should not make this mistake. So I identify my keyword, my competitor as uh, as this website that's talking about freelancing. And then uh, I go back to Uber suggest. I type in the domain name and now I should be able to see not only the keywords this website is ranked for, but I will also be able to identify their competitors. How do I do it? So I type in their domain name. I click on the search result, loading as we speak. And it's, it tells me that this website has 2,047,820 2, organic keywords ranked on Google alone. This website is big. This website is huge. They've got organic monthly traffic of 889. So if I, assuming if I get um, daily traffic between five to 10,000, uh, even if uh, I take it as 10,000, 10,000 a day multiplied by 30 days in a month is 300K. So this website is thrice as big as beingguru.com. Then it is also showing me domain authority. I don't want to go uh, and touch this domain authority in today's lecture. Uh, so I'm going to discuss this tomorrow. And then it talks about backlink. That's what we're going to discuss now. Uh, backlinks mean similar websites that are into this relevant industry as you, you are. They link back to you. So how do they link back to you? If I go back to this website, there you see a link. So if they have given an outbound link, which means if I'm, when I click on this link and it opens another website and a new pop-up tab, this means, let me see if I can come up and finally identify an outbound link here. Too much inbound linking. This seems like a directory here and directory 
tend to rank better than the websites. Yeah, this is a directory. But anyways, who cares? Uh, outbound link means that you give an anchor link about a different website, not yours, and you drive or take your audience out from your website to a new tab and they see that particular website. That's what you call outbound link. Inbound link, you drive the traffic inside your website. So all of these links are inbound. If I click on soul traders, it would take me inside debitor.com. So I still stay uh, inside the website debitor.com. That's what you call inbound linking. So that's the difference between inbound and outbound linking. Now, the biggest thing here is, if we go back to Uber suggests, how do we identify their traffic? How do we identify their keywords? To begin with, if I scroll down, it shows me all the pages rank per by country and the top pages. So liabilities or what are liabilities seems to be the major keyword they are ranking for. They seem to be ranking good for reimburse expenses as well. Freelancer, they are ranked at third position and they typically get around 16,164 search volume searches for this particular keyword. They are ranked in US, they are ranked in India, they, they are ranked in other countries as well. SEO keywords, there you go, right? So they are these are the keywords they get the huge traffic on. They get a huge traffic on keyword reimbursement, liabilities, reimbursement, DAF taxes, freelancer. Wow, brilliant, right? And if I search for freelancer as a keyword, I'm sure this would be very difficult to rank. But just because uh, they have been in business for a long period of time, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're getting... Uh, the major keywords ranked as well. So if I click on keyword but traffic, what do I see here? Loading as we speak, huh? If I click on keyword but traffic, these are the keywords that are getting all the traffic and that Uber suggest is also showing me the position a keyword is ranked at. Also the estimated visit every single month, you know? So it is showing me all the information. And uh, on the right-hand column, SD, which is the SEO difficulty, since it falls in red, yellow area, uh, Uber Suggest is telling me this website is pretty high ranked. And these keywords are difficult to rank for, especially for a newbie. Now, the last thing you need to know is your competitor. What are the similar websites to debitor.com that, you know, the ones who also rank for these competitive keywords? And there you go. Investopedia, Tron.com, CorporateFinancialInstitute.com, and the list goes on. Uber suggests folks as one amazing tool. One amazing tool to identify your keywords as well as your competitor. Not sure if I have performed all the free searches here, but if I get to get back to keyword overview, and if I search for freelancer, right? Let's see if I'm able to perform this search result because I think I have I've ran out of the uh, available quota. It's No, I'm good to go here. Now, there you go. SEO difficulty is seven, which means I am unable to rank for this competitive keyword as a newbie, but that should not discourage me because if I look at keyword ideas, surely I would be able to identify keywords that fall in the green area. And there you go. If you, if you understand this part, you understand blogging in detail. So we have established that anything that falls in a red area of SD is hard to rank. So freelancer is a main keyword, very hard to rank. But when I talk about freelancing writing jobs, look at the volume, 27,000 people search for freelance writing job. Yet it's SD is 
it you know it it's 33 and it falls in a green area freelance meaning freelancer jobs freelancer for websites there are so many keywords that have got good search volume and yet they fall in the green area of SEO difficulty. These are the keywords I need to focus on. So as a blogger, what are you supposed to do? You start selecting these keywords that fall in a green area. So I'll, I'll select this one and then this and then this keyword freelance meaning freelancer for website also falls in a green area freelancer work freelancer.com this comes to me as a surprise that freelancer.com actually falls in a green area freelancer online jobs freelancer game i don't want to write about freelancer game even though it's a pretty decent search volume every single month 2900 precisely uh, but not my circus not my monkeys Freelance web developer that does not fall in green area. So I'm not going to go for that particular keyword. And by manually going through these difficult, uh, different uh, keywords and clicking on the checkbox, I export my list to CSV. There you go. So we found more than 30 keywords. You can export 512 keywords, upgrade your account. No thanks. For now, I'll live with it. And it has downloaded the image, uh, the, the CSV file. If I open the CSV file, since I've shared my full screen, again, opening as we speak, give me a second. There you go, folks. This is all you ever wanted to know. This is a gold mine. Not only I have downloaded the keywords that have got less SEO difficulty. Look at this right hand column. But I also get to see their search volume. Now, as a blogger, I would be advised to. How do I click on close here? Don't save. That's fine. Thank you very much. A uh, lot of. Sir, I'll confirm you tomorrow after direct. OK, OK. I look forward to your response here. Now, how do I go back to my screen? There you go. That's how I come back to my screen so this is how you identify your keyword this is how you identify your competitor now that's just the first step you want to counter check it with another tool that another tool is hlf right now let me come back on the screen to just recap the process here before i go back and share my screen again look if you want to do blogging, if you want to learn how to be searched, how to be found for your business related keywords, there are two ways to do it. A, you play blindfoldly, which means that you do not identify your keywords, you do not identify your competitor, and then you start writing about something only to find out that you have wasted hours after hours and writing about something that was a people were not searching for b it, it is hard to rank because it is very competitive now that mistake would only cost you your time, nothing else, because in a return, do not expect anything. You are not going to get rank for your business related keywords. You are not going to outsmart and outthrow your competitors. In contrast, more logical and the best way of doing blogging or starting blogging is identify your keywords first and then know your competitors. Once you identify your keywords and once you know your competitor, just like the way I sh I've, I've shown, I, you know, I showed you. Copy all those keywords and then start writing your blog post, focusing on those keywords. But make sure when you write, do not uh, focus on keyword stuffing. What does keyword stuffing means? 
keyword stuffing means that assumingly the keyword we want to rank for and we are writing an article for is freelancing definition. Now you would be stupid if you start keyword stuffing, freelancing definition, for example, freelancing definition is very important to know because many people today struggle about knowing the meaning of freelance definition. But let me tell you what is freelance definition. Freelance definition is something 6,000 people search for on the internet, but not many understand the reason, the meaning of freelance meaning. In this blog post, if you read all the way till end, I will tell you the real meaning of freelance meaning. So are you interested in knowing the real meaning of freelance meaning? Let's get started. Hey, thank you for reading this far. Let's take a deep look at now. What did I, what am I doing here? I actually started, uh, you know, <laughs> narrating the whole keyword stuffing story. But keyword stuffing actually is very dangerous because Google identifies you as a spammer and not only they blacklist your website, but there's a zero chance, absolutely zero percent chance that you will get ranked. This brings me to the second question, a logical question. Dr. Asma has just asked it. Thank you for stealing the words here. How many keywords should be included in one blog post? My gut feeling and the experience says not more than three. There's a way you, you know what? The best way to rank for a keyword is to write in depth about the topic. If I share my screen again, and if I talk about writing in depth, let's just take Uber suggest for an example. So I've shared my screen here. There we go, full screen. I go to uh, I go to Google, and there we go. And I search for digital marketing. I want you to pay very close attention to this topic. This is very competitive niche, keyword marketing. If I scroll a little down. I come across Neil Patel's website, Digital Marketing Made Simple. One begins to wonder what has he done, ex what has he done extraordinary that has let him or, you know, uh, given him a chance to rank for his business related keywords. And the answer is simple. You land on his blog and you scroll all the way to the bottom. You see a good blog post has images. It builds a story. It engages the audience all the way to read till end. It talks about explaining the topic. Again, the images, perhaps a video somewhere. A good blog post not only covers a topic in detail, but they all, but it also includes related pictures, builds a narrative covers a story, builds a story, and then tries to grab the interest of the audience so that they spend a lot of time in reading your blog post. Now, since there are pictures, since there are, you know, in uh, infographics, I'm sure there's a story being narrated here about digital marketing, about the proofs, about uh, the types of digital marketing and then you are one is inclined absolutely inclined to read all the way to the bottom there you go so what do we establish here a a good blog post covers everything in detail b a good blog post also tries to engage its audience and the only way you engage your audience is imagine if I was reading this blog post without an image, without a single image, right? This would have been very boring. I would not have spent more than two minutes and uh, I would not have gone beyond four paragraphs to say the maximum and I would have gone on to another website that probably 
as a as a blog post which includes images has a blog post which includes videos a nice story and uh, you know talks about the thing in detail this is why for you to become an authority you need to cover topics in detail a mistake i did when i started as a blogger on beingguru.com was we would cover a blog post we would uh, uh, you know briefly cover a blog post and that's a mistake my kids are still doing for example here's a blog post that talks about how to make whatsapp voice and video calls on desktop and i click on it and there you go something that's covered inside let's say 200 keywords no this one is actually good it's ranked on uh, on on google and it is getting a, a you know good audience here but imagine a blog post with only text nothing else who would even read it now look at the right hand side trending now why would people be interested in knowing about what's trending on being guru how about helping them to navigate their way to more topics on your website and uh, a little while ago i asked you guys to remind me about these right hand side guides or quick uh, you know uh, fall back to uh, manual and if you want to op- as a blogger if you want to open your blog pay close attention to these guidelines these are topics people might be searching for internet and once they are searching for these keywords on internet neil has smartly covered these main topics and has written a blog post covering these topics in detail so therefore by showing them in the guidelines on the right hand column by enabling people to navigate through further topics stay on the website not only he's encouraging google to rank him higher for his business related keywords these are all his business related keywords if people spend a long time on a website it encourages google about the credibility of that website because google take it as an authority google takes you as someone who is an authority and knows about these topics so therefore people spend more than usual time in reading different blog posts on your website it means you're doing something exciting you're doing something interesting or you're giving them an information they are looking for so these quick guideline imagine you've got the cricket website cricket the game how about throwing in a quick guideline batsman bowler wicket keeper cricket grounds uh world records uh, world cups and the list goes on and on the chances of your website getting ranked because you have covered every topic in detail and then you have enabled your visitors to navigate through different topics easily without uh, leaving your website this says a volume about who you are as a blogger so if i click on digital marketing for a discussion sake There you go. I come back to this main page. What happens if I click on let's say SEO? It takes me to what is SEO. The URL also plays a instrumental role in ranking of your website. The URL needs to include the keyword in in you know uh, people are searching for. So SEO is a keyword. What is SEO is a keyword. Neil has included this keyword in the URL in the in the domain name uh, in the domain link as well as he has written a detailed blog post covering wow star wars covering uh, uh, this particular topic and that's not about it as a matter of fact he has also embedded his youtube videos So if I play this YouTube video 
and he's giving me a chance to go directly to his YouTube channel. If I click on this YouTube icon, I land directly onto Neil Patel's YouTube channel. That's how you scale your business, two in one shot. Uh, you know what the good news is? When I started blogging, Neil was ranking somewhere in mid 700s. And I just touched 250K on my main account and Neil, has, Neil is uh, uh, standing at 852. Seems like there's going to be a good fight for 1 million. <laughs> Need your prayers though. Now this is how you identify your niche, how you identify your keywords, uh, how you identify your competitors. And uh, Jay Jawan, Jay Kisan, Vajiva, Sudhir Kumar Ji. And then this is how you write about a topic. A good, effective, engaging blog post not only builds a story, but it has images. It has embedded videos. Now, let me give you a reality check. I assume, uh, uh, Dr. Asma, when you talk about keywords, only one keyword should be included in a URL. And that too, how about building a story? What is SEO? What is digital marketing? I was actually coming to it. How about you? Uh, yes, you can hire content writers to write for your blog. That's what I do. I mean, I don't write all the time. So I have a team uh, uh, consisting of four writers who write for me. Now, before I forget, I want you to go to youtube.com and, and search for digital marketing. Please do it right now. I'll stay on camera because this is going to be one interesting exercise here. I want you to go to youtube.com and search for digital marketing. Assumingly, you are from Pakistan. And if you are from India, even, you know, search for freelancing. Search for blogging. In air gaming, you are still stuck on hosting, mate. Go for bluehost.com. No, I mean, I, 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 you know, that's how you win the game. Cross-linking between different platforms, embedding a video onto your blog post. So if a user is, 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 is reading a, your blog post story, and I keep on emphasizing on the word story, unless and until it is engaging enough, just like a story, uh, people won't spend time. And if they spend time, you are actually encouraging as a blogger uh, to not only your viewers, but also to you're encouraging Google.com as a search engine to index you higher for your business related keywords. Now, I will want you to search for digital marketing. And if you are in Pakistan, you will see me in top five results. The reason why I'm able to rank for digital marketing, for freelancing, for blogging, uh, for digital products. If you are from Pakistan, search for digital products on YouTube. You'll find me. You'll find my main channel, not this one. The point is, by cross-linking between apps, by writing a lot of content about uh, that particular uh, niche, you are giving yourself a fair chance of getting ranked. When I search for, if I take you to Google, there you go. Share screen again. There you go. So if I take you back to, let's say, Neil Patel's website, and I search for digital marketing on Google. Let's see what do we get here. Images on the top. Sometimes it shows videos. Sometimes it does not show you the videos. So if I click on the videos icon, videos tab, the third on the right, and uh, I don't see myself here. So I go for marketing, uh, sorry, freelancing on Google right now. If I search for freelancing, I scroll and I, there you go, you see me. Not only you see me at once, you see me twice. That's that's how you scale it up. If for me to rank for a keyword freelancing, if I click on all and I come back, for me to rank uh, rank for this keyword freelancing, it, that would be a far cry. It's it's very difficult. We've just seen freelancing is typically searched for around eighty thousand searches every single month in US alone. So uh, that's just US alone, not sure about the rest of the world. So it's a very competitive keyword. But by creating lots of videos on YouTube, 
by writing on binguru.com. So there you go. I go to binguru.com. I move my mouse over the tab freelancing. There you go. And I click on it. I have written around 200 different blog posts covering freelancing. And every third or fourth blog post would would embed that embeds, uh, you know, uh, my different videos of freelancing. So Google and YouTube, remember, both are alphabet companies, both are same companies. I am encouraging Google to rank me as a uh, as a blog. And if they, you know, somehow because of the huge competition for this particular keyword, if I'm unable to rank for that particular keyword, at least I'm giving myself a fair chance to be ranked, to get ranked on YouTube. That's how you do it, right? So this is how, uh, uh, this is how you scale up your internet presence. This is an irrelevant platform and I'm not going to talk about the hosting platforms. Uh, stop wasting your energies. Uh, I don't care about uh, which which host is expensive or which host is easy. I mean, uh, that's irrelevant discussion and I don't want to waste my energy there. I've answered you already twice and that's about it. So don't act stupid. Uh, back to the topic. Now I'm sure I'm able to emphasize the importance of identifying your keywords, knowing your competitors and start writing tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to, tomorrow I'm going to come back and we are going to cover an actual blog post on WordPress. I'm going to show you how you can write. Uh, I have not uh, selected 20 lucky lucky winners. I intend to do it by weekend, hopefully. I'm going to show you how to write, how to include keywords. And uh, this is going to be one amazing, uh, you know, process. Now, before I leave, there's something you need to understand. You need to understand the importance of backlinking. Hey, for all those, if you can like this video, I'll be more than happy. I have no solution for this, Adil. If it is uh, suspended, it is suspended. Sorry, you're going through this, but uh, uh, I have no clue. I'm as clueless as you are. So the best way is to get in touch with Upwork uh, support in Request them to review your account. Uh, I apologize, but I feel bad for you. For you, uh, feel bad that you're going through this. Now, when you talk about keywords, when you talk about uh, title, when you talk about description, I will show you this in detail tomorrow. Absolutely, I'll cover everything about keywords and. Uh, um, tags and all that stuff. But when you talk about backlinks, uh, let's just spend 10 minutes and understand the importance of backlink. Now, if you talk about politics, assumingly you have a political blog and you talk about politics. If I ask you a question about shout out, and let's see what answer you come up with. The first question is, if I get a shout out from Barack Obama about my work, about my website, would that make sense? Or if I get a shout out from, let's say, Ganji Swag about political website, what do you think would make more difference? More, uh, what would add more value to my business? To my people, to Google predominantly. And I'm going to spin the question here. So I've got this cricket website. I wonder if a shout out from Shwee Bakhtar would make more sense or if a shout out from Barack Obama would make more sense. Spinning the question here. For the first one, it's absolutely right. Barack Obama, right? Because Barack Obama means I am getting a relevant shout out, something that is relevant to my uh, my business line. I have a political website. 
getting a shout out from Barack Obama means a politician is giving a shout out. And in contrast, if I give a spin to the uh, question here, a shout out from Shweb Akhtar, a cricketer, for my cricket blog would make more sense since it's coming from a relevant person than a shout out from Barack Obama, even though he might just be far more. It's not about might. Of course, he is. Uh, he's far more famous than Shweb Akhtar. So the point I want to emphasize is backlinks weigh in heavily if they are coming from a relevant sources. So if you've got a cooking website and if a big cooking website refers you by giving a backlink by, uh, you know, uh, on their website, it's an outbound link, just like we have discussed uh, a few minutes ago. So if they give you a shout out, if they give you an outbound link, telling their viewers or readers that, look, if you want to learn how to bowl fast, this website and they, they, they create a link on this website. If user clicks on this website, they're taken to a blog website that covers fast polling. Relevant linking, backlinking makes more sense not only to the audience, but also to the Google. And therefore, it encourages Google to rank you higher. This is how you do it. Backlinking in 2021, there's a huge debate among different pundits. Some say backlinking does not count anymore. Some, sit, some say that it's still a relevant ranking attribute in 2021. But as far as I'm concerned, I, I, I think a, rank, a good backlink coming from a relevant website actually adds a lot of feather in your cap. It is important. It is uh, something one must pay a close attention to. So now it brings me to the question, how do you get relevant backlinks? Of course, you can get relevant backlinks if you have a website at first place. So you talk about different topics. And once you talk about different topics, covering, uh, you know, different niches, uh, micro niche, of course, but talking about different topics in the micro niche, then you will be advised to get backlinks from a relevant website. If you read this blog post, I want you to click on this and bookmark this blog post. I personally uh, uh, helped a lot of people in ranking higher for their business related keywords just because of backlinks. If you if you ask me, how am I able to scale up beingguru.com in the last two years? The one answer would be backlinks. I'm getting relevant backlinks. I'm getting backlinks from Forbes. I'm getting backlinks from big websites, Pro Pakistani, Express Tribune. The list goes on and on. And I still need to work on it, but uh, so the problem is, my blogging business goes on the back burner when uh, something negatively pops up because at the end of the day, we've got to make ends meet and freelancing is the only way. Client projects uh, come on forefront here. And recently, my energy is spent on work chess because I'm uh, uh, too uh, focused in rebranding work chess and making sure that all the 80,000 people who have signed up on this amazing website. They get a value for the time they've spent and more people join me in this moment. And so uh, again, that SEO thing I have learned has helped me in ranking work chess as well. So work chess grew from zero subscribers, zero sign up all the way to 83,000. How did I do it? I do it courtesy. I was able to do it courtesy uh, search engine optimization. So I was, I tried ranking for the keywords people are searching for. So if you search for Pakistani freelancer, uh, you'll come across work chess. That's how you scale it up. Now, the best part is many of the people who have signed up on work chess, they do not know I own it. 
that's the most amazing part it i experienced this on beingguru.com as well so there was a seminar and i showed up and i said okay uh, hey guys i'm sham sarwar i'm a freelancer and uh, in in the middle of the conversation i talk about uh, beingguru.com and all of a sudden crowd goes bizarre hey we did not even know sham sarwar owns beingguru i'm sure this must have come as a surprise to uh, most of you watching this stream as well because the way i have branded being guru and work chest as independent of isham sir so therefore uh, you know somewhere down the road everybody will begin to realize that uh, that's me behind the gun and uh, you know personal branding probably ways in a long way and at some point of time i'm thinking about doing this so backlinking uh, google does not uh, uh, blocks you if you are backlinking it is actually one important way of scaling up your blog go for it so if you click on this blog link i've just given you uh, just paste the link again there you go 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 through these different websites identify your niche six months dr asma uh, this is why you know you were in cohort 1 you missed cohort 2 you were in cohort 1 and if i were you i would have made all the efforts uh, it's the same education everybody uh, got in cohort 1 probably a little better of course because i'm learning uh, how to uh, you know teach better i hope uh, i am i'm uh, doing justice to my teaching here but i've learned how to uh, you know uh, instruct uh, in a in a in a more effective way but as far as the information is concerned the knowledge is concerned is pretty much the same now folks i want you to go to after backlinks i want you to do, to go to the description of this video and as an assignment i want you to go through these two blog links read it and rewrite it in your own words and then of course uh, submit your assignments in the close group uh, now you understand the exercise i was trying to do from the day one i was trying to form a habit of writing in you in a long run i tell you blogging is not not only one effective way of making passive income but at the end of the day uh you never know it might just become your primary gig as well because if your blog kicks off uh, you're all for money i mean when i say you are all for money uh, let me show you something let me take you to my my gmail.com give me a second okay so i go to gmail that's how you make money as a blogger so you make money as a uh, as a blogger you make money through google adsense program and then you also make money through advertisements i'm going to share my screen with you let's give you a little surprise here share screen share screen share screen chrome tab uh There you go. Full screen. Now I want you to see different emails where people are talking about putting in. Uh, they're talking about requesting a sponsored blog post. So this email just came in. I'm not sure what it is. There you go. So this email is from Christy. She's from businessdirectory.com. and she says that uh, she has got voice searches and this is the link and they want to get indexed on guru. beingguru.com now what i'll do is i'll tell them my price and if they agree to it i'll give them a backlink that's how you build backlinks let's see other offers i have for a sponsor post there you go emma wills hope this message uh, i am offer top notch and uh, but not at least my blogger and i'm serving some so i do not do work okay that's fine whatever it is um again if she wants to 
get covered on being guru again my team will send her an email that uh, that's what we charge robin hayat thanks for getting my letter. could you specify whether you accept links to companies like and also please let me know whether links will be permanent or not marks are sponsored so my team has actually responded to this email there you go hi robin we charge us dollar 75 for one blog post with one do follow link which means that uh, we are telling google that this is uh, an authenticated uh, website and uh, therefore we are giving this website a do follow link and we charge 75 dollars per blog post for one single blog post so my team sent an email to robin hayat and uh, uh, we got a response here that that's fine uh, i mean seems like uh, they're okay with the pricing, but they want to know that the link would be permanent and not marked as a sponsor. And of course, my team will respond to this. As a blogger, the point I want to emphasize here is, folks, you make a lot of money. If you've got a good blog post, if you've got good audience, people watching your view, uh, blog posts, people visiting your website every single day, there comes a point, there comes a time where people start requesting for sponsored blog post. That's how you scale up your digital marketing as a newbie. You'll understand this when we discuss the first lecture of digital marketing on Wednesday. But the point here is, if you grow, you will be, you know, you will be getting a lot of lot of sponsorship posts. And uh, that's how I survived all 2019. That's it. Hello. We would like to pay you for placing our content on your page. Our brands are Nestle. And, okay, fine. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have? What else do we have? Uh, Biometic, Sammy, request from FlexClub. So uh, thank you very much for the positive response. It's a great honor for us and would we like to call as president. I'm sorry for not being able to pay for it, but in turn, I'd like to offer a premium account for your full use. Could you please first register? Uh, this guy does not even know that uh, we have already spoken to uh, another influencer and she has agreed to give us 20 free flex clip links. So I'll pass this on. What else we have? Richard. So uh, Richard says, now take a look. 75 is out of my budget. How about link insertion? What's the fee to simply place a permanent do follow link? And my team would probably respond. I assume they will... Uh, uh, they will charge him around $35 for placing a link in an existing blog post. Still a win-win business at the end of the day. Uh, hello, Jaws. Before we proceed, uh, could you uh, we cover the following payment options? Bank transfer, Peony, credit card, Peony, scammers, Pakistani, Peony, scammers. Jolan, thank you. Hello, how are you doing? Okay, I apologize. Just forgot that I'm live. Anyways. Uh, what offer did we throw to Jovi? And it's still the same, $75 for blog post. And the list goes on and on. Coming back on screen. If you grow your brand as a blog, not only you'll be making money through Google AdSense, but at the end of the day, you'll be getting a lot of sponsorship offers. That's how influencers make money. And this is why I want you to Pay close attention to blogging. Drop in your eyes if you liked what you have seen in the last one and a half hour. And if you have uh, just watched uh, this video for the, in the last 10, 15 minutes, it won't hurt you to like this video. And if I'm not asking too much, go on and smash the subscribe button on my channel. Kaka Code, my Afghanistani friend is here. Kaka, how are you? Yeah. These, these eyes are the best part I look forward to at the end of the conversation. Love this. For how, ma how many, for how many of you? It was just something you did not know earlier. You didn't know before. Okay, that's fine. So, for how many, this was just absolutely new information. Thank you, Doc Cyber. How's your website doing, by the way? 
you, you, I see you, you're getting a lot of visitors on your website from social media, but I wonder if uh, uh, the keywords are beginning to rank on Google. Yeah, I mean, I try to cover everything in depth, in detail. Where is give up? I don't know what is give up. And if you ask this again, I'm going to temporarily put you off. I love the way you teach in GFX Mentor. Thank you. By the way, for you. Hey, here's an interesting question. How many of you know that I have an Urdu channel as well? Or... Uh, uh, okay, not so much. So Rafi seems to uh, disagree with what he has learned. Maybe he has learned this earlier as well. So tell about Google keyword research. That's what I, sh um, perhaps you joined the stream late. Uh, you joined it late, uh, but I've discussed everything in detail. Oh, so you do not even know that I have an Urdu channel as well. Wow, that's interesting. Go and search Hisham server. <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So this is it. This is it for uh, this lecture. Tomorrow we are going to cover. Uh, let's see what do we have on 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 table here. I am going to create a blog post for you. I am going to show you the importance of putting in the keywords in your blog post, in your title, tags, description. And uh, then I'm going to uh, talk about uh, uh, event blogging and then uh, affiliate blogging. So that's the agenda for tomorrow. And then, of course, Google AdSense. So tomorrow is event blogging, AdSense, affiliate blogging. Write a blog. Okay, that's fine. Amazon, Amazon affiliate blogging. Let's see. Let's see what we can cover here. Tuesday it is tomorrow. Uh, and then, uh, uh, by the way, I, I should be live at the same time, not 9.45, 9 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. So I'll schedule the video in advance. Uh, and you'll be able to identify the time difference. I want you to like this video because this helps me as a content creator. It helps uh, me in telling YouTube that uh, people are, uh, you know, liking my content. They watch my content for a long period of time. And once they are watching something for a longer period of time, that's naturally an encouragement for YouTube to recommend my video to other people. So if you can do it, I'll be more than happy, more than happy. Absolutely. You can translate Urdu videos to English and post on your blog. Uh, go ahead and do it. That's a good idea. Take care, folks. 9 p.m. tomorrow. I'll schedule the video. Bye.